my name is Bien King. I am currently based in London. I am the CEO and co-founder of Let's Reinvent and I am originally from the Philippines and moved to China to study and to work before getting here to London. And today I'm going to discuss about understanding your change maker identity and the ways to embrace and lead change. So for the first lecture, we're going to tackle the exploration of your change maker identity. Now, my first question to you is, do you consider yourself as a leader? This may or may not be a tough question. And my goal for this module is for you to be confident to say, yes, I am a leader. For many years, I personally struggled to identify myself as a leader. I don't always put myself forward when I think that many other people can lead better than I can. Even after I founded my own startup Let's Reinvent, I still doubt myself whether I am a good leader or whether I can really make a difference. And so I think honestly across many leaders from different parts of the world, it's very common to feel the imposter syndrome or to always doubt yourself whether you are the best person to represent a community or to be a leader of an organization. Another challenge as a leader or a change maker is to sustain not only your energy and your morale, but sustaining your team's morale and enthusiasm to act on the vision and the action towards change. The greatest challenge of all is giving yourself a starting point when you have never done it before or when you didn't have any role models to follow or any mentors to guide you to the right direction. Whatever stage of the change maker journey you are right now, I want you to know that you are not alone. The power to affect change is within you. Regardless of whether you are to make a small or big step towards your personal or professional development or goals, be proud of it. Learn from it and celebrate it because change starts within you. In this module, I'll help you explore your change maker identity. I will also give you some tips on how to embrace and lead change. So let's begin. So what is a change maker? Whatever you are doing, however old you are, or wherever you are, you have the power to influence and affect change. Think of Greta Thunberg or Autumn Peltier, or Lea Namurgerwa. They sure are very young to lead a global movement, but they did sure capture the attention of the world. Your community must be facing various degrees of risks and impacts of climate change, and must take ambitious steps and urgent call to protect our oceans, biodiversity, the climate, and sustain the development. You might feel helpless or unsupported or maybe feeling exhausted with all the hurdles you have to overcome. Hence, your attitude as a change maker is critical to break the stereotypes of what a leader should look like or sound like and set an example and take the lead for your fellow young people and senior leaders to follow. We are a diverse, multi-dimensional beings with different strengths, capacity, personality, and privileges. Now, in this episode, I want you to take a quick DISC leadership personality test to give you a starting point and a better glimpse of your identity. 
Although our identities are fluid and changes over time, it's crucial for you to have a better understanding of who you are as a person and leverage your unique identity and personality to suit you with the types of activities or approaches you will need to affect change and help you become a better, stronger and a more resilient leader. I need you to either get a pen and paper to write down your answers or print out the worksheet in this module so you can progress through the set of questions as you like. There are 24 rows of words to describe you and each row will have four words. So the first word is under the column A followed by columns B, C and D. And your task is to choose the word that best describes you right now. Pause the video if you must, so you can take all the time you need to choose the words per row that best describes you. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer in here. It's important though to be honest as much as possible so that the results will be more accurate about you. Now. Each word per row represents a personality within the DISC Leadership Personality Test. By the way, if you have not taken this test before, don't worry at all. It's a very simple and quick test. And DISC represents, as in D for dominance, I stands for influence, S stands for steadiness, and C stands for conscientiousness. So if you select column A, word in the first row, find and circle where letter A is in the disk sheet. So as a tip, it is under S. And so now you have to do this for every row. Once you have completed circling all the corresponding letters, add all the circled letters that are under the columns D, I, S, and C. And when you're done, I'll share with you what your personality tells about you. You know, it's common to have equal sums for the two, three, or even four personalities. And it only means that you most probably possess the, them all. Or maybe you were able to show certain personality depending on the social context or environment. We as human beings are very adaptable. So it is very natural if you feel that you are equally outgoing or reserved or adventurous and careful. The DISC task measures your personality and behavioral style and in no way measures your intelligence, your aptitude, mental health, or values. It allows you to increase your self-awareness and enables you to increase self-control, boost higher creativity and self-esteem. Likewise, it can help you form new habits and form and set new goals and build better relationships. Now, let's deep dive more into the personality types. If your results show that you are dominant, it means that you are extroverted and outgoing and task-oriented. You tend to be more direct, decisive, and driven. Typically, you have high confidence and self-motivated and are very comfortable taking risks. If your results show that you are influential, you are likely to be extroverted and outgoing and people-oriented. You are most likely to be inspiring, impressionable, interactive, and involved. You like to engage with others in conversations and tend to be very popular because of your social skills and charm. If your results show that you are steady, it can mean that you are more introverted and reserved and people-oriented. You are typically calm, easygoing, and collected. You like supporting and collaborating with people and you work hard to ensure team harmony and balance. If your results show that you are conscientious, you are someone who is more introverted and reserved and tends to be more cautious and careful. Typically, you are analytical, detail-oriented and intentional and you are inquisitive and make sure that everything is working the way it should. 
If you feel that the results are not accurate about your personality, that's okay. The most important part here is leadership is expected to be flexible depending on the different situations, different stakeholders, and different outcomes. For example, if you are approaching a tight fundraising deadline, then you will be expected to be more decisive and driven to execute strategies to meet your goals. On the other side, if you are working with vulnerable groups, it is crucial to exemplify that you are showing great sensitivity and consciousness over people's situations, special needs, and further requirements for assistance. There are times, however, that you'll have to combine two, three, or even four types of personalities to lead, to influence, rally, and boost your te team's morale to achieve a collective goal. Your challenge now is how do you respond to the arising challenges and changes around you? We'll discuss more about it in the next episode. Welcome to lecture two, Embracing Change. Leaders are found at every level of an organization. Whether you are a student or a community volunteer, a club treasurer, a customer service representative, an intern, or whatever it is that you're doing, you are still capable of creating a difference and sparking change. You will have realized not all leaders are change makers and not all change makers are leaders. Sometimes it will be very hard and frustrating if you cannot easily succeed in the change that you want to see in the world or within your community. So what can you do to stay resilient and remain positive, adaptable, and strong despite the challenges and failures you encounter? I have my top three tips on how you can effectively embrace change. My tip number one is to gather 360 feedback. What do I mean by this? You know, giving and receiving feedback is so important. Also, not all failures should remain as failures. Sometimes you have to take them as lessons so you can learn and you can be prepared for the next time. Feedback is so important because it allows you to be aware of what has to change for you to improve on your work, on your relationships, and the way you work with different kinds of people on different initiatives. Your goal is to recognize the importance of giving constructive feedback, but more importantly, receiving them fully so you can act on your improvement journey. There are free online forms which can create and facilitate getting feedback. You can use tools like Google Forms, Typeform, SurveyMonkey, or Airtable, where you can tailor the questions and even make submissions anonymous and generate shareable URL links to share across your social network. You can ask your friends, your family, your work colleagues, clients, project participants, or other people or stakeholders whom you think should comment on your work and as a leader so you know exactly what to improve on. My tip number two is to provide or to learn how to provide constructive feedback. There may be policies or activities within your communities that may be creating negative effects, welfare of the people, natural resources, and other species. It's very important to be critical about the issues surrounding us, but it's also important not to alienate individuals or groups of people, especially in this political climate where personal beliefs divide our society at an astonishing level. So my tip number two is to understand the basics of providing critical and constructive feedback. Remember, it's not always easy to receive a feedback. In fact, some people may take it personally, so be very careful when setting your tone and in your intention. As a Toastmaster Club member, I learned that it's very important to seek a balance that favors positive remarks over the negative. 
What do I mean by this? Try to start the conversation by stating first the positive points. It gives the receiver the impression that you are being respectful, objective, and acknowledging the positive elements of an activity or work. Next, point out points for improvement in a very constructive, respectful, and specific manner. Lastly, end the feedback by reaffirming your positive intentions for improvement. If you want to go on the extra mile and offer further support depending on the context of the situation, offer ideas, resolutions, or alternative ways to correct an issue. One thing that springs to my mind is how Agile Frameworks is so relevant to this topic. There is a format called an Agile Retrospective Meeting where teams look back in the feedback they have for the sprint or in other words, the project life cycle and everyone in the team provides a constructive feedback by answering the questions what went well, what could have gone better, what will be the next steps and what questions do we have. Providing constructive feedback, you are enabling others as well to improve and understand where they fall short. As a leader, it is in your best interest to help your fellows to work with them to identify their strengths and points for improvement. This is a more sustainable way of empowering others to be change makers and to encourage leadership from the younger generation. My top three tip is embracing learning development. Technology drastically changes the way we live, work, and play. However, there are still a lot of unknowns regarding the effects of technology in our future. Being open and receptive to change means not being afraid to explore the new possibilities of how to incorporate technology to create positive impacts in our life and society. It also means that we need to keep being curious and be vigilant to make sure that we are not neglecting our responsibilities of taking care of our planet. It might not be easy to access technology, especially in remote areas where accessibility to basic needs and resources are still a challenge. The beauty of the Youth for Our Planet initiative is for us to continuously learn how we can create an impact. And by joining the movement, you are making one step forward towards a global action. We're making sure that we are spreading awareness and consequently enabling others to begin their change maker journey and embrace learning development. I'll be providing more options on which sites offer free online learning opportunities. I hope all these tips are useful to you in understanding your change maker identity and leveling up your leadership in your local communities. Welcome to lecture number three, leading change. One effective way to map out your strategy to lead change is by defining your theory of change. A theory of change is a description of why a particular way of working will be effective and showing how change happens in the short, medium, and long term to achieve your intended impact. It can be represented in a visual diagram or as a narrative or both. In the previous modules, you should have known more about the concept of mind maps and change maker journey maps. Basically, the theory of change is somewhat an extension of those concepts, but only this involves your stakeholders as well in defining in more detail of, on how you evaluate and measure your impact. A theory of change is usually developed when you start an initiative to help with strategic planning or to describe an existing project so you can evaluate it. You should also have a deeper understanding of who your stakeholders are. So this may mean your staff, your volunteers, trustees, beneficiaries, partners, collaborators, funders, and many others. In practice, a theory of change should be number one, credible, 
this would be based on the previous experiences and insights for, from your different stakeholders or relevant research where appropriate. Number two is achievable meaning you have the necessary resources to carry out the intervention or the project. Number three is supported. This means that your stakeholders will be involved in defining and agreeing your theory of change, which builds support for it. And number four, testable. In other words, a complete but not overcomplicated description of your work and its outcomes with prioritized outcomes for measurement and indicators to collect data against them. So what are the steps to create your theory of change? In a nutshell, there are 10 steps to draft your theory of change. I'll provide more resources in the worksheet, so please check them out. So what are these 10 steps? Number one is plan your process. Number two is collect evidence of need and context. Number three, it's to agree your intended impact. Number four, it's to articulate your long-term outcomes. Number five, it's to map your intermediate outcomes backwards. Take a note of this one. It will be crucial to in curating your theory of change. Number six is to identify outputs. Number seven is to clarify assumptions. Number eight is to establish timelines and plan resources. Number nine is to produce your diagram and narrative. And number 10 is to get ready to use your theory of change. So how do you measure your impact? Developing a monitoring and evaluation framework helps clarify which pieces of information to collect to evidence your theory of change. It's good practice to include people who will be collecting the data when you develop the framework. You could also involve your stakeholders, such as your project beneficiaries, your volunteers, trustees, partner organizations, funders, etc., in implementing this good practice. Ideally, you will write your impact measurement framework before your project starts so you can make sure that you are collecting the appropriate data from the beginning. For example, you want to, to organize a cleanup drive. You may want to say that your objective is to organize one workshop per month in the next six months targeting a total of 100 young people per workshop. Then at the end, you would like for them to be responsible for the street cleaning um, initiative and you will have assigned street monitors to assess the level of cleanliness, consistency and sustainability. So that would be like your KPIs of um, the initiative. So this can be as simple as creating the monitoring of how many workshops has been delivered versus the numbers of attendees per workshop and for the long-term monitoring, you will be measuring the cleanliness of the streets per week. And of course, the measurement can be more complex than that. And so the earlier in the project you begin this definition of the key indicators of your success and impact, the clearer and more transparent the objectives will, and the better the outcome and focus of your team will have to properly execute your theory of change. I'll be providing further resources on how you can create your own theory of change and I'll challenge you to use it when you start your first project as a change maker. I hope you enjoy this module on exploring your change maker identity and the ways to improve and lead change. If you have any questions, you are super welcome to reach out to me via my social media accounts. My social handle is at Yen King or via letsreinvent.org. And I sincerely wish every single one of you the very best and congratulations for taking the remarkable step of becoming a change maker. Hi there, we hope you like this episode. For more information and resources about the ideas and tips discussed in this episode, check out the worksheet dedicated to support your change maker journey. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on social media or visit youthforplanet.com. See you in the next video!